Hello and welcome to the 2022 Division III Women's Soccer Selection Show. I'm your host, Jeremiah Johnson. This is the best week of the year for 64 teams who will learn their first round NCAA tournament matchups over the next 30 minutes and can start thinking about the path to a championship. 44 schools are relaxing a little bit right now knowing their name will be called as they have earned automatic qualification into this championship. One team will be selected from Pool B as an at-large. The other 19 berths reserved for Pool C, which includes institutions from automatic qualifying conferences that did not win their conference championship and any remaining Pool B teams. 16 four-team sites will conduct first and second round play on this first weekend of the championship, November 11th and 12th and 13th. The goal for every single team to be playing the first weekend of December at Kerr Stadium in Roanoke, Virginia. Christopher Newport is your defending champion. It is time now to see the field for 2022 and the first school to show you a host this weekend. Misericordia, a championship contender for sure, completing the first unbeaten regular season and has a school record unbeaten streak. In the Mac Freedom Tournament, the Cougars outscored their opponents by a combined 12 to two score. Emma Schweitzer broke her own program record for points scored with 62. She was also named MVP of the Mac Freedom Tournament. They have now made 14 NCAA tournament appearances and reached the Sweet 16 one year ago. They will host Marywood, who won the Atlantic East Championship with a 1-0 win over Newman. Carolyn Walters scored the game-winning goal in the 83rd minute. Goalkeeper Rebecca Becker has not allowed a goal in 522 minutes and 29 seconds. Kate Kohlerdai was selected tournament MVP. All four of her goals were game winners. And one more name to mention, Riley Mulherin led the Atlantic East in goals, assists, and points during conference play after missing a full month with an injury. The Pacers have not lost a conference game since 2019. York, Pennsylvania is in 12-4-4 record. At-large selection has York in the tournament for the fourth time in program history. Their reward, a matchup against Western New England, the automatic qualifier out of the Commonwealth Coast Conference. First ever CCC championship for the Golden Bears. Should be a fun first round game between Western New England and York, PA. Moving down the bracket, Emerson is in. The Lions, the automatic qualifier representing the new Mac. Emerson defeated Clark University in Saturday's championship. The win marks the program's very first conference championship. Caitlin Johnson scored the game winner. Congratulations to Emerson. They'll square off with 15-3-1 Westfield State. The Owls are led by graduate student forward Jen Rennick. She became Westfield's all-time leader in points and assists this season. Also a COSIDA academic All-American last year. Sophomore forward Delaney Parker led the nation in goals in Division III in 2021 with 31. Moving on, Bowdoin is in. They hosted the NESCAC tournament quarterfinal for the first time since 2015. And despite a loss to Wesleyan in that game, Bowdoin earns at-large selection. Samaya Bernardo leads Williams with 10 goals and 23 points. Now, the host of these first and second round games, Scranton has won three straight landmark conference titles in five of the last six. Royals have also won an NCAA tournament first round game in each of the last four seasons, dating back to 2017. That should be a fantastic first round matchup between Scranton and Bowdoin. No surprise, moving on to see Johns Hopkins name on the screen. The headline on the women's soccer page called it perfectly. A Baker's dozen, JHU wins its 13th centennial tournament title. Kendall Dandridge had a goal and two assists in the 4-0 title game win against Dickinson. It's a high scoring squad. The Blue Jays have now scored 79 goals on the year. That ranks as the third highest single season total in school history. This is Johns Hopkins 17th straight NCAA appearance. They will face Leslie, the New England Collegiate Conference automatic qualifier in the field for the ninth time in program history. Congratulations to Cali Masters, the NECC player of the year. Trinity, Connecticut will host games this weekend, a 7-4 and six record playing in the challenging NESCAC, good enough to earn an at-large selection. Third NCAA appearance for this balanced squad. First since 2016, as you see some highlights on your screen. Congratulations to Trinity for getting that at-large selection. They will host SUNY Geneseo, State University of New York Athletic Conference automatic qualifier. SUNY Geneseo is in for the 10th time 
in program history. MIT is in and earning hosting rights, making the 11th NCAA tournament appearance overall. Six straight tournament appearances as well. Graduate student Karina Groff is the NCAA Woman of the Year top 30 finalist, also leads the team with 25 points, second with nine goals. The MIT defense has posted 13 shutouts this season, allowed just 72 shots on goal this season. The defense, anchored by junior Julia Chen, head coach Martin Desmaris, recorded his 200th career win earlier this season. MIT meets Sarah Lawrence, 14-3, and three is their record. The Skyline Conference automatic qualifier and a first-time NCAA participant. Williams is in a 10-4-2 record for the 21st time in school history. Congratulations to Williams. They will take on Southern Maine. The number one seed in the Little East Conference tournament held up thanks to a 3-1 overtime victory against Western Connecticut State. The first LEC title, the first NCAA tournament, a day and week to savor for head coach Seth Benjamin and the Huskies. One fourth of the way through the bracket. Moving on, we say hello to Carnegie Mellon in and hosting action this weekend. Despite a 1-0 loss to Case Western Reserve, Carnegie Mellon's 12-2-2 record and 5-1-1 mark in the conference at large material this is carnegie mellon's ninth ncaa tournament appearance katherine mcnichol and alex adams lead the tartans in scoring they each have eight goals on the season carnegie mellon's first game is against bryn athen bryn athen will try to upset carnegie mellon the aq representing the colonial states athletic conference first back-to-back -back champion of the csac since cabrini they did it in 2011 through 2015 Kira Bradley was named the conference tournament's most valuable player, while Ashley Rivera is second in all of Division III with 28 goals scored. Calvin has not lost a game all season. A windy, rainy Saturday did not stop Calvin from prevailing in the MIAA tournament final. A 1-0 victory against Trine puts Calvin officially in the field for the 13th time in program history. Calvin will match up with Nazareth in the first round. The Golden Flyers making their second consecutive NCAA appearance. Congratulations to Nazareth. Three goals scored in the conference tournament, two in the semis, one in the final, all by first time goal scorers. Head coach Gail Mann is in her 30th season. The Empire Nine championship win was the 350th of her career. Wartburg has a winning campaign. 15-2-2 is the record. They are now making a 10th NCAA appearance. And you see the star. They will host action this weekend. They'll welcome Grinnell to campus for a first-round game. The automatic qualifier representing the Midwest Conference. You see their record on the screen, 11-2-5. Happy Monday, Wash U. 21st appearance and at-large selection. Wash U has had a lot of success in this tournament with an all-time record of 44-15 and 10. They'll take on St. Catherine with a 13-4-4 record, the automatic qualifier representing the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. It has been another magical season for Messiah. A 17-2 shot advantage usually does lead to a win. It did in the biggest game of the season as two of those 17 shots found the goal in a victory against York. Not only did that win give Messiah a 19th conference tournament title, but also avenged their only regular season loss to York. They'll play Penn State Burks in a first round game, as you see 13-5 and two, led by United East Tournament most valuable player, Emily Clapper. Penn State Burks back in the tournament for the eighth time in program history. Time to celebrate SUNY Cortland. The Red Dragons in as an at-large after dropping the conference title game and penalty kicks to SUNY Geneseo. The 1992 national champion, SUNY Cortland, making a 14th NCAA appearance. They'll get to host games this weekend as well. So a sweet deal for SUNY Cortland. The first is against Wesleyan, Connecticut. Thrilled to see their name on the screen. They are in as an at-large second consecutive NCAA appearance, second in school history. Great tournament run by the sixth seeded Cardinals, no doubt helped get them in to this at-large spot. Emory is a host institution, fourth consecutive 
tournament appearance, 32nd straight winning season. Senior Kylie Hall set team records for most consecutive games with an assist, most consecutive games with at least one point, as well as the team record for most assists in a single season. Fourth in Division Three in assists per game. You get the idea. Kylie Hall is an assist master. Piedmont is Emory's opponent. The Lions earned a Pool B at-large selection after winning the first ever College Conference of the South title. Haley Dornan was named Tournament Most Valuable Player. Piedmont will compete in the NCAA tournament for the sixth time. They are, though, still looking for that first NCAA victory. One more game to tell you about on the left side of the bracket. It's time to celebrate Washington and Lee. An at-large spot in the field secured thanks to an undefeated regular season and 14-1-5 overall record. Goalkeeper Sydney Smith makes it difficult to score. She boasts a .65 goals against average. Guessing they are fired up in Lexington, Virginia right now. First NCAA appearance since 2016. A fantastic weekend for Center College knocking off Two seed Barry Friday and the top seed in the Southern Athletic Association Sewanee on Saturday. Center earns automatic qualification into the NCAA tournament for the 12th time in program history. 32 down, 32 to go. We'll continue to show you the teams, matchups, and host institutions from the right side of the bracket when we return after this short break on NCAA.com. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Jeremiah Johnson, fired up to share the news with you, announcing 32 more teams and their place in the field for the Division III Women's Soccer National Championships. Let's get right to it and say hello to Case Western Reserve at the top of this bracket, a season of firsts for CWRU, first undefeated regular season, first ever University Athletic Association Championship, also ranked first in the most re recent Region 7 rankings. Quite an impressive year for first-year head coach Abby Richter. Cameron Hartman leads the Spartans with 10 goals and 7 assists. Congrats to Case Western Reserve. Pitt Greensburg is their first-round opponent. Second time in three events, the Bobcats will represent the Allegheny Mountain Collegiate Conference in the NCAA Tournament. Ithaca had one of the biggest wins in conference tournament play over the weekend, ending William Smith's 14-year run as conference champs. They did so thanks to defense. Claire Reeder was named the tournament's most outstanding performer. She made 11 saves during the tournament, including 10 during the championship. Ithaca will make a 29th NCAA tournament appearance. Should be a fun first round game for Ithaca against Capital. Their eighth NCAA appearance with the 12-3-3 record. Capital grabs one of those highly sought after at large selections. Loris is in and a host this weekend. You see the star on the screen. An attacking squad making a 16th NCAA appearance. Loris number one in the country in corner kicks per game. Peyton McDonnell is second in the nation in assists with 16. Wisconsin Superior is their opponent, second straight Upper Midwest Athletic Conference Championship thanks to a dominant 6-0 win against Northwestern St. Paul on Saturday. Maya Holmquist and Naya Wilson each had hat tricks in that conference championship. Happy Monday to Ohio Northern. The Polar Bears are back-to-back -back Ohio Athletic Conference Tournament Champions. Senior goalkeeper Becky Moss made six saves in that game, posting her 14th shutout of the season. Rose Holman ready to compete in this week's tournament, just the third in school history. The Fighting Engineers grabbed the HCAC AQ spot thanks to a 1-0 win against in-state rival Hanover. Leading scorer Kyra Hicks scored the game winner, the 70th minute, setting the stage for a wild on-field celebration just a little bit later. Amherst is in. The Mammoths celebra celebrated the NESCAC tournament title thanks to a 2-0 win over Wesleyan, Connecticut on Sunday. They're now 16-2. A sixth conference tournament trophy is now added to the case. Abby Schwartz and Allie Deegan scored goals in the title game. The Mammoths have won their last five games via shutout. It is not easy to score 
against Amherst. They will play against Westminster PA, the automatic qualifier of the President's Athletic Conference, sixth NCAA appearance, but first since 2006 for the Titans. RIT is a host institution this weekend, an at-large selection. The 12-3-3 record impressed the committee enough despite a loss to William Smith in the Liberty League semifinals. Sophomore Sam Halligan is the team's leading scorer with 11 goals. She also has eight assists. Congratulations and keep an eye on RIT. Johnson and Wales Providence will make the trip to RIT this weekend. A three-peat for JWU Providence in the Great Northeast Athletic Conference. A program record 19 victories this season for the Wildcats in the tournament for the fifth time. Jordan Restivo leads the country in assists with 18. Now I mentioned William Smith a short time ago. Time to give them more praise. They are also in as an at-large despite falling to Ithaca in the Liberty League Championship. That game was decided by penalty kicks. Ithaca prevailed despite William Smith having a 21-8 advantage in shots. Now the Herons also had a 9-3 edge in corner kicks. They're the two-time national champions making a 32nd NCAA appearance they're used to being in this tournament. William Smith will host SUNY Delhi this weekend, the fifth seed out of the North Atlantic Conference Tournament. They did prevail in that tournament. It was a win to savor, not just the first NCAA appearance in school history, but the first time any SUNY Delhi team sport is advancing to the NCAA tournament. Quoting the banner on the main page of the school's athletic website, it's a great day to be a Bronco. Indeed, congratulations to all those student athletes. Now Tufts takes one of the final at-large spots in the field, the ninth appearance for the Jumbos. They finished National runner-up in 2000, heartbreaking 1-0 double overtime loss to Amherst in that NESCAC semifinal game on the season. Tufts is outscoring its opposition 41-12. Thalia Greenberg leads Tufts with 15 points on the season. You see some Tufts highlights there on your screen. Now, Denison is deserving of this next spot in the field. A shutout win in the North Coast Athletic Conference Tournament puts Denison in for the 17th time in program history. First, though, since 2016. Avery Butler and Callie Davis were the goal scorers in the championship with Butler taking home tournament most valuable player honors. Gail Murphy is in her 26th year leading the Denison program. Only 16 schools remain. Some anxious moments for those hoping for at-large selections. Defending champion Christopher Newport is the next school to discuss. The number one team in the most recent Region 6 rankings, Christopher Newport still smiling after winning that coast-to-coast -coast athletic conference championship over the weekend. The undefeated captains improved to 16-0-2. They only needed one goal in the championship. They got it from senior midfielder Emily Talata in a 1-0 victory against Mary Washington. Talata, conference tournament most valuable player for the second consecutive season. John Jay gets first crack at knocking off the champs. 12-2-2 is their record. They earned the league's automatic qualifying spot from the City University of New York Athletic Conference. Thanks to a 1-0 victory over CCNY Saturday, Michaela Scotch was named tournament MVP. Montclair State is actually going to be a host for this Christopher Newport game and this one that they are playing. You see Montclair State Aileen Cahill and Kylie Prendergast became the first duo in program history to score hat tricks in the same game. Aileen led the Red Hawks with 15 goals and 39 points. Congratulations to Montclair State. It'll be a fun first round game for them against Lynchburg. Automatic qualifier representing the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. The 2014 national champions Lynchburg will make a 21st appearance in the tournament once again. Those two games will be played at Montclair State this weekend. Trinity, Texas is a host this weekend. Another dominant season in the SCAC for Trinity, winning the conference tournament for the 26th time. First 20 win season though since 2016. This program is used to making November travel plans. Congratulations to Trinity. They were the national runner up, remember back in 2013. Pomona Pritzer gets the chance to try to upset the host, the Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference automatic qualifier for the third straight season. Amanda Koo and Hadley Johnson have each scored six goals this season. Happy Monday to Mary Harden-Baylor. 
Second in the final Region 10 rankings, Mary Harden Baylor enters the tournament with a sparkling record. You see that 16-0-1, an amazing year capped off by the school's first ever American Southwest Conference tournament title. Gabby Gibson scored the only goal in the title match. Congratulations to she and Mary Harden Baylor, a team that will play against Pacific Lutheran in a first round game. A scoreless draw at Lewis and Clark helped Pacific Lutheran clinch to that Northwest Conference automatic qualifying spot. Sophomore Hannah Cecil paces the Lutes with 15 goals this season. Moving on now, Wisconsin Lacrosse is a host school. They've got a record of 19-1-1, champions of the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. This is their fifth NCAA appearance. Moving on, it's a great day for a to be a Greenville Panther. First time in the Division III National Tournament, thanks to a 1-0 win against Westminster, Missouri on Saturday. Greetings to those watching at Illinois Wesleyan. Kaylin Steffens was named the CCIW Offensive Player of the Year for the third straight year. She is now the conference's single season record holder for most goals and points in a conference schedule, beating out the previous record of 13 and 30. She has 15 and 32. Sawyer White was named the conference's newcomer of the year. Concordia, Wisconsin is looking to keep its winning ways going this weekend. A third NCAA appearance thanks to a Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference Championship. Two games, four more teams to show you. Next up, Rowan, the NJAC automatic qualifier for the first time since 2016, thanks to a 2-1 victory over Montclair State. Fitting to share this quote from Coach Scott Leacott. I love the effort all year. We gutted out a victory today, and I could not be more proud of the dedication the players showed throughout the season. Congratulations to 13-0-4 Rowan. Methodist will meet Rowan in the first round, 12th NCAA appearance, first since 2017. Methodist represents the USA South Athletic Conference. So the final host institution is Virginia Wesleyan, 14th NCAA appearance. The Marlins had to wait until this last game in the bracket to learn about that at-large selection in the field. Virginia Wesleyan dropped a penalty kick heartbreaker to Lynchburg in the ODAC championship, but that is forgotten now as they are in again. The logger, last but not least, we would like to welcome Puget Sound. They get to play again. The loggers made a strong case for inclusion into the field as an at-large by finishing with 12 wins in their last 14 games. Senior Ava Chalakian is a goal scoring machine. She has 17 goals on the season so there you have it 64 schools and a full bracket cannot wait to see what transpires over the next few weeks in the division three women's soccer national championship all games except the semifinals and final will be played on the campuses of competing institutions winners of the four sectionals advance to the semifinals december 2nd and 4th at kerr stadium in salem virginia we should note if a sunday no play institution advances to the final site the semis and finals will be held on December 1st and 3rd. Log on to NCAA.com for more information regarding the 2022 championship, including the complete bracket with dates and sites. My name is Jeremiah Johnson. I thank you for watching and best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's championship. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.